Okay, welcome everybody out um, to our essential oil class, online class today uh, with Jade Baldwin. And the essential oil that we're talking about today is rosemary. Does everybody have uh, experiences, examples with rosemary? We'll, we'll, <laughs> some of you don't, some of you do. Uh, we'll get into it um, and, you know, we'll, everybody will have a chance to share their um, experiences. If you don't have any, that's okay. I'd um, like to welcome everybody out to. Um, that is listening to this on the podcast. Um, and if you have any questions, please just leave your comments on that on that page. I'll share with you that page right now. So um, this is found at jadebalden.com slash rosemary. Um, there's a section for comments. Oh, a little bit. Sorry, I just went too fast. For the, the, there below and questions as well. We read everything. All right. Um, and without further ado, I'd just like to introduce our presenter, Jade Balden. Um, she's been doing essential oils for years and years and years and years. <laughs> Over um, seven, six years? Yes, almost seven. Yep. Yeah. And um, we have a lot of other friends online here that are, are sharing with us that also have lots of knowledge of essential oils. And so um, really appreciate everybody joining us tonight. And without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn the time over to Jenny. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, for all the tech support. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Crushed it. <laughs> so first of all, welcome everyone. Um, does anybody have any experience or stories they want to share about rosemary? I just used it this week, actually, this weekend. Um, I had some bad allergy stuff going on and or, or I don't know, it was just sinus issues. And um, I just looked it up and I was looking at different ones and believe it or not, I told somebody Rosemary a while back and I completely forgot. And she said, and she reminded me, she said, which ones did you use that? And I said, well, I'm getting ready to pull them out. And she said, I thought you said Rosemary was good for that. That's what you put on your toes the last time. And I was like, oh, Rosemary. So I went to it and I looked and it said, like I was putting it on my toes, but it said to like uh, rub it here, wherever you were feeling it. And I had the breathe out. I was diffusing breathe and I had smelled it and it worked. But when I put the rosemary right here, like it just cleared instantly. And the pain, like the sinus pressure just all went away. So I like carried it with me all weekend and I did it like every four or five hours. And like it worked so good. Like once I did that, I felt so much better. And so um, I was at church and I was like, do I smell funny? And they're like, no, it didn't, it didn't smell, but um, it worked really, really good. And I, I completely forgot that it like helped with that. And then um, my neck was also like bothering me too. So I made a blend and it, I used rosemary in that blend. So it worked like two places the whole weekend. And now today I'm finally all back to normal. So awesome. And it was just a few days. That's great. Thank you for sharing. I have an experience with rosemary. Um, sometimes when you get really stressed, you have these um, physical symptoms of stress, and it could be um, itchy or. Anyways, my scalp gets dry sometimes, and and rosemary uh, with some lotion um, in my hair um, really helps that out. So yeah, that's how I use. And, and I haven't lost any, I see you have hair loss on your this guy. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's very short. <laughs> you know, ben has, um, you know, a very itchy scalp when he gets stressed. And, uh, you know, that's what he did, just uh, put it in his um, lotion, his hair lotion. Yeah. So that's awesome for him. Anybody else have an experience with rosemary you want to share? I use rosemary in my hair shampoo and all of my hair tonics, and I've been doing that like rosemary hair rinses. I'll, I started out with just doing like the actual herb, and then when I um, started using essential oils, I put it in everything, and I have really long <laughs> hair, so it works. Awesome. <laughs> yes, that's what I was going to tell people to do too. Put it in your shampoos and things. Awesome. Anybody else? I'll share. <laughs> rosemary, when I first got started with doTERRA, rosemary was one of the first oils I added to my very first LRP. I'm not sure why I was attracted to rosemary, but actually over the next few months I had got all the kitchen oils and then I learned how to use them all. But I use rosemary a great deal for 
Um, my boy's acne, when it does not um, respond to Melaleuca or HD Clear products, they will reach for the, ac the rosemary on their own. And so very often for, for girls that are having issues with acne, um, if it's hormonally based, I reach for the rosemary for that too. But I've used it also for respiratory support. And um, uh, when lime and breathe don't work, I'll put rosemary, marjoram, and frankincense on the spine for immediate breathing, air, opening airways when we're in trouble. And um, that works fantastic. And then I forgot the other reason I always use rosemary, but those are two that came to mind right away. There's a rosemary third one. chicken. <gasps> oh, it's my memory loss. That's what it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's my memory loss that I use rosemary for as well as her. Yeah. As demonstrated, people. <laughs> <laughs> Get your rosemary out. I thought she was pretending. <laughs> Awesome, thank you for sharing. So you can see there that uh, rosemary is great for yeah. Yeah, I, I just I just wanted to say um, from what De Debbie said um, that sometimes they try things and they don't uh, they don't work yeah. and you can try something else. So, someone someone had a question before we started our call earlier. Um, you know, so many essential oils have similar properties. How do you know when to use them? And the truth is, we're all different. And if you look up in the modern essential book. Um, book for instance or one of any of the um uh what do you call them reference guides they'll have just a list and you can mm -hmm. try one and if that stops working or if that doesn't work you try another um because sometimes we just don't know the root cause so debbie gave great examples of that you know that with the acne and yeah and uh, what was the other one memory <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's right. I was just going to say that. Um, so you look at this picture here. Rosemary is great for respiratory support, for hair loss, enhancing memory, adrenal support, liver support, and stiff and tired muscles. Okay, so, uh, you just you have an idea of what it does, but I want to tell you that. Just, and there's much more. Those just are the like main ones. yeah, just like other oils, um, the rosemary oil. You know the the plants. Um, the essential oils are the plant's immunity. So, you know, one, uh, the plant can't just be, you know, good for just one thing, right? The essential oils in the plant can't be just good for one thing. It, can, it needs to be, um, you know, varied because it needs to protect the plant from various things. So if you think about it, it overlaps. So we operate from a paradigm of a pill for an eel uh, or, you know, whatever the medicine is, it's for this particular problem. Um, and so when we are asked about essential oils, it's like, what oil for this problem? And sometimes the answer is like five or six different oils and people get confused because they're expecting you to give this one answer to the one problem. Um, and then you think about it, essential oils that we have from doTERRA comes from all over the world. So some parts of the world, they don't have, to say we have Australia, um, they may not have Arbor Vitae. Okay, but they have melaleuca, and so they use what they have. And normally, whatever is local is the best one for you, okay? Because, you know, you have the local problems, health problems from the environment that you're living in, and there's always an antidote nearby. So you see what I mean? It's funny because I look at the people's root, um, I guess, where they're from, their ancestry too, so if I see uh, a lot of Vietnamese people, Chinese people, I actually offer them uh, a lot of oils that they're familiar with. The lemongrass and um, peppermint. I offer uh, a cilantro mm -hmm. and basil a little bit and um, ginger. And they love it. They think it does everything, which is great for them. But you see other people, I have Italians, I go for bergamot, I go for lemon for them, and they think it works for everything. So you see, sometimes you just think about it a little bit, maybe their ancestry, their you know, genealogy, kind of has a more affinity towards those oils in that place. But these oils, they, they can overlap. I can use this oil for these people just as well. Um, but I feel like the, very, the thing that differs um, is the emotional side of it. So sometimes we don't know what the emotional root is, and that's why we play with the oils. Okay, I have this problem here. The scientist, like Stacy said, you know, this breathe wasn't doing the job, but whoa, this rosemary is did it. 
And you think, why? <laughs> the last time I used this. No. Yeah. And I, I, we've had the question from people like, why does this essential oil do so many things? Well, if you think about it, this came from the rosemary plant. We have a rosemary um, in our little herb Yay. garden. We, every once in a while, Our we <laughs> cannibalize it and make some chicken or something with it. But that's all, like, that's, if the essential oil is a plant's medicine, is a plant's way of dealing with ailments and everything, this is all it has. You know, the rosemary plant, I know sometimes we get the essential oil from a part of the plant, but this is all it has to deal with all of its concerns. So that, that, essential oil has to help that plant in all those different ways and mm -hmm. it just so happens that it will help humans as well and dogs and cats and goldfish <laughs> made of fish and my sister did that <laughs> <She's> not here <laughs> okay so let's um move on anybody have any questions or comments you want to make all right let's get into it all right so rosemary According to flower law, rosemary is the oil of remembrance. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Very cool. Okay, it's, and it helps with memory, but it, it, they use it for remembering ancestors and things, so, and history. So that's rosemary. Uh, people in the past believe that rosemary helps um, clear out evil spirits. Okay, and whether it does that or not, it clears out negative energy. Because it does, it shifts things and helps people change and helps people be more positive. So it will look like, you know, the evil spirits have been left. Mm -hmm. Cool, huh? Yeah. Alrighty, so we'll move on. Guys, you're welcome to raise your hand and comment any anytime, okay? Um, okay, so we're looking at the body first. So, so like course. always, we, 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 uh, Jade separates us into the body, mm -hmm. um, the mind, and spirit. So, And there's a handout for those of you who are joining us for the first time or listening on the podcast. You go to the, the web page here and you can download a handout that has the top 10 uses. Okay, sorry. No, <laughs> sorry thank for you. All the thank yeah. you. Okay, so it, clean, it cleanses the air. Okay, of course, it's very powerful against um, environmental threat. So you can just diffuse it alone or diffuse it uh, with other blends, other oils that you like. So um, if you got someone ill in the house or mm -hmm. if some colds are going around, mm -hmm. this is one of the things that you can diffuse. Mm -hmm. If you're waiting for your own guard to come in your order <laughs> or you want to try something else. Or... Mm -hmm. And this is one of the oils in on guard. Mm. Yeah. Okay, um, the next one is to relieve uric acid buildup in the legs. Uh, so it's four drops of rosemary, six drops of cypress, five drops of lemon, five drops of lavender, mixed with fractionated coconut oil and massaged on the legs several times a day. Drink plenty of water because every, like every oil, your body's gonna use it to, to cleanse the cells. In other words, detox. Okay, so you want water to help assist that um, cleansing. Okay, um, and then of course, if you have a lot of uric acid buildup um, in your legs, consider using the Lifelong Vitality supplements too. Okay. Um, I have a personal story that uh, my dad, it's interesting, but he had some kidney problems. And um, those kidney stones were made from you know, hardened uric acid, right? And that's kind of funny. And then when we helped him with that and he felt better, um, the uric acid went down to his legs. <laughs> and then we had to help fix his legs. But it's interesting because um, it didn't take very long. It didn't take very long to, um, to help him feel better. So it was within a, a couple of weeks. Uh, but the beautiful thing is we're using rosemary, an oil that helps you change um, how you feel. And the emotion behind the uh, kidney problem and the, this problem in the leg, it's about hardened resentment, anger, and uh, just feeling hardened. And that is exactly what his body was physically manifesting. 
And so Rosemary says, change, <laughs> shift, move that negativity out. And so it's funny that his physical body changed too, along with that mental change. Anyone with any questions, comments? Yep. Barb has a question. Oh, I'm yeah. Barb. Yeah. Um, so, like you were referring to your father with kidney stones. So, would that be true for gallbladder stones? Um, or is that two different? Uh, I haven't animals? experienced it. I just invited friends to look the, that up. Um, anyone else with experience in that area? With gallbladders? I have, and um, rosemary is not typically one I use, but it can be actually. Mm -hmm. um, but Jade, this this uric acid buildup is a new one for me for use of, of rosemary. I appreciate you sharing this recipe. There's a couple of people in my family that are struggling with this right now. Yeah, but it makes sense because it comes from the hardening of the thoughts and the minds. I've got to stick with this thought and I won't change. And you're like, ah, <laughs> come on, you can do it. Yeah, my dad complains and he said that it's because he's too old, he can't change. <laughs> I'm like, no, watch me, I'll help you. <laughs> Yeah. All righty. Um, yeah, I for gallbladder, I use a lot of lemon. Um, yeah, any gallbladder problems, I use a lot of lemon, but I haven't experienced it very much, so I don't know what else to use. I just usually look it up. I think it said um, lemon, geranium, mm -hmm. and there was another one because we helped somebody else um, that worked with my mom. There was one other one, but I think we started with lemon and geranium. Uh -huh. and she, yep. she got relief with those two. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's good. I know that the emotions or the feelings attached to gallbladder, I actually was just looking this up and I was looking into the um, essential oils for a friend earlier today, um, but bitterness, anger, and wanting to force things like kept on coming up. So that makes sense. Like with yeah. Yeah, you know, I'm in the Modern Essentials book, and, and for gallbladder, it does say rosemary right up front. So it does say geranium, rosemary, yeah. lavender, juniper berry, and then it adds grapefruit, wintergreen, and lime as for stone. Mm -hmm. And so rosemary is less listed for stones and for gallbladder support in general. That's awesome. So when you said hardening, I was like, I gotta look that up. I'll bet yeah. good rosemary's in there. So it is. Yep, rosemary is for change. Basically, in the um, emotion book, it's for transition and knowledge. Uh, so it's about change, change your, your thinking. Yeah, that's awesome. Thanks, you guys. All right, we'll move on. Um, like what Ben said, uh, it's great for the hair, great for the scalp. So you can actually have uh, this particular rinse. I read this. Um, and it's three tablespoons of Epsom salt, five drops of rosemary, two drops of grapefruit in uh, two quarts of water and mix it up and then just rinse your scalp with that because some people might have dry and then they have flaky skin on their scalp and that helps. It's really interesting how um, it helps uh, with the scalp in that in a way that uh, I was thinking, what about the other oils? The, the skin mm -hmm. oils. Mm -hmm. The other skin oils. So, yeah. very interesting. I think rosemary is also in the um, uh, the hair. Uh huh. The hair you know, products. I was saying a hair tonic, the root to serum. tip serum. Serum. Oh yeah. That has a. That is amazing. That is everybody amazing. familiar with the uh, DoTerra's root to tip serum? The hair. Yeah. Now that you said it, you, you can smell it in there. And it's it's fine. It smells good, but it works really nice to keep it like uh, soft and smooth and healthy. <laughs> so I had a, a long, basic. luxurious hair. <laughs> 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 I had an amazing experience uh, with that one. Actually, the, the rosemary is that did amazing. Uh, things for my friend she had a MSG poisoning and so she was going bold she had to wear a hat and she said she spent two thousand dollars on all these remedies and it just didn't work and then we asked her again if she wants to try essential oils and um, my friend just thought of maybe just give her the 
root is tip because that will you know keep the oils on and she used it and she said that was the only thing that helped her and when i saw her again she had a bit more hair and she said that was because of the serum and i thought that was amazing uh, but i like this blend because it, it gets to the um the root of the problem right it's it's about changing your thoughts i mean if you're stressed out i mean your head and your hair um will have problems um and here it just goes down it's not going to be uh, cosmetic and fixing that skin um it really will go into in the way we think it's really interesting Alrighty, so here's Stacey, you're saying that he uses, you can use rosemary for breathing, for respiratory. So here we have two drops of rosemary, three drops of wild orange, two drops of ginger, and four drops of eucalyptus. So that's another different blend. Um, so if you use our breathe blend, and it doesn't do the trick for you, you might wanna make this blend up. I actually did, um because I looked it up and it did have all that. I didn't have ginger, but I used the other ones. And I liked the rosemary here, but I put all the rest of them up here. And um, I guess just the smell maybe of the rosemary went deeper right here. But up here, it seemed like it needed extra. So the eucalyptus and the orange really helped. So it's funny because you could just try different things and then see how how it was but um yeah I used the whole thing on and I did use the uh you know the stick yep it, I got it last month because it was the thing or whatever but I got that and I rubbed it on my chest I, I did like all this combination of stuff but I saw like how it responded different ways and the same thing with my neck um I tried one thing and, and stuff that usually works, like the white fur usually works, but it wasn't doing it. And then um, the past tense. But I looked up Nick and the essential oil, and I put all of them at first. And the next day, I was like, well, the rosemary is working real good. And, you know, I just put a couple, and I was like, no, I need all of them. So then I got a roller bottle. I put them all in there. I said, that's it. This is for my neck. And it worked. But the breathe blend, um, I didn't have the ginger, so I went and put it on my order. But I used the rest of those, and it it worked really, really well. So that's awesome. <laughs> for for those of you that are listening on the podcast, Stacy was just motioning to the side of her nose. Oh, or she's sorry. on the side of her nose, or just above her eyebrows. Is that right? <laughs> you said on the side of your nose is um, where it worked, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, well, the the blend of the wild orange, the rosemary, the ginger, and the eucalyptus, I used on my forehead, and there was like you know sinus pressure there, and I put it on my nose as well. But I I don't know for some reason I just rathered the um, rosemary right there on my nose. But um, yeah. I mean for other people they might like it, you know, all that the the blend, the whole blend everywhere. So yeah, because that it that is a difficult thing to know, like where to put. On the essential oil. You, so that, you develop, to, after you play with it a while, you develop yeah. an intuition and you just trust it and just do it, even if it doesn't seem to make sense at first. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and I was telling um, Stacey, you're making big changes in your life, you're stepping out of your comfort zone, and you know, it makes sense because she's making changes that her body needs this extra support. Um, and Rosemary is about change. Excellent. Okay, so now we have a sinus foot bath. Um, and remember, sinus concerns have a, is a gut, is linked to a gut concern, okay? So when we take care of the gut, sometimes I use um, just digest then on the sinus areas for people and it helps clear up their nose. Um, so it's like treating the sinus by soaking your feet. Yeah, yeah, so you soak it uh, with, of course, two tablespoons Epsom salt. The Epsom salt helps you know, the oils go in more. And um, two drops of rosemary, one drop of ginger, and one drop of white fur in warm water, and you just soak it for 10 to 15 minutes, okay? That's amazing, because you have all the reflex points on your feet, helps the oil get drawn in. Now, th these are very good blends. You know, uh, the Breathe essential oil or the Easy Air essential oil for Australians um, has a peppermint in it. And for some people, that peppermint really wakes them up. And if they're, they're um, you know, having respiratory problems because of a cold or something and they're trying to get some rest, here's some solutions for them that, yeah. you know, will you know, help them. 
um, you know, not have to use that as the an peppermint um, as an alternative. Mm -hmm. So that's very good. Yeah. All righty. Um, anyone want to say anything? Is everybody familiar with Epsom salt? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. All right. Uh, earlier in that little poster, I talked about adrenals. Okay. And this is linked to it too. So this is fatigue fighting bath. Um, and this you put in your bath. Okay. So of course, two tablespoons of Epsom, Epsom salt, two drops of rosemary, four drops of wild orange. Um, so it's funny how rosemary and wild orange likes to go together. Two drops of thyme and four drops of peppermint. And then you can just uh, soak in that and uh, inhale and relax in the bath. Okay. Give yourself a bit of a spa relaxation breath. Mm -hmm. Yep. <laughs> Some people are, are, you know, they're, they're wanting to know um, what sort of oils they can use in their bath to soak with. And a lot of people use like lavender or Roman yeah. chamomile to, mm -hmm. you know, get some um, sleep and stuff but yeah. fatigue fighting mm -hmm. good yep so that's good um for people who understand the chakra system rosemary is great for the adrenals and your third chakra okay so oh i would oh, that was very sensitive there we go all righty um for you know the brains for memory for uh, focus you can use uh, one drop of rosemary two drops of wild orange on your wrist and you know you can smell it uh, as you drive or uh, if you need it to, to help you um, be more alert during exams and tests so that's uh, another option because we, we do have other oils to help with focus but like the in tune blend mm -hmm. which is your focus blend yep but here's an alternative because sometimes you're just limited to what oils you have, you have so. that's right yeah okay uh don't uh let yourself be overwhelmed by uh you know what oils exactly do i use just use the ones that you have at home okay for whatever it is that you're in need of all righty i don't know if anybody has any stories for these last two uses doesn't I, I know I don't. <laughs> is anybody um, is anybody here not familiar with rosemary? Like you've never smelt the rosemary oil before or used it? Anybody? It looks like everyone has. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Alrighty. So you'll be very pleased with this next one. Okay, ready? What sexy legs, ladies? <laughs> five drops of cypress, five drops of rosemary, two drops of patchouli. Mix it all together with fractionated coconut oil and massage it on your legs, around the veins, on the veins. Just okay. to help things uh, be smooth and move along. More circulation. You can do that twice a day, drink lots of water. Easy peasy. The cypress is that um, that oil that stimulates some circulation, angiogenesis. Yeah, I was going to say um, the creation of new veins and everything yes. it supports in that process. Mm -hmm. That's so, right. Yeah. Okay, so here is an immune system reboot because I know I've met a few people that uh, have complained that they have been sick for a long time and they they just can't seem to shake it off. Uh, so here's something that you can do. Uh, seven drops of rosemary, four drops of eucalyptus, four drops of lemon, two drops of cinnamon, there's a lot here. Uh, three drops of clove bud, three drops of lavender, all of that mixed together and rub it on your feet. Okay, and then wear cotton socks and do this four nights in a row. So Dr. Sue Lawton says that that's an immune system reboot. Can you guys see why? If you understand the oils more, can you see why? It looks similar to the recipe for um, hunger, it doesn't. Uh, mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. Very similar. Yep. But I, I can say that um, the last year in the fall, I did have, that's the last time I ever had any sinus thing. And um, 
I was putting it, putting the oils, you know, on my nose and stuff. But that night I put it on my feet and I put the arm guard and I realized how much better, how much quicker it made me feel. So the next day I was like, oh, don't, I was telling Ethan who did better than I did. He used the on guard and now he's not having any allergy stuff. But anyway, um, I told him, make sure you put it on your toes. That's like this, that's like your sinus thing. And it feels so much better. So the next day he was like, okay, how many times did you do it? I said, I don't know, whenever, just try every four hours. So then that night I was like, how are you feeling now? And he's like, oh, I'm feeling so much better. So like your feet, um, it says like the tips of your toes for that. But um, it, it, and even when I worked in pediatrics, we used to tell people, rub this on your child's feet, put socks on and let them go to bed. And they won't cough through the night and they'll feel better. So like, it really is important that, you know, you can use it where you feel it, but it will help like four or five times, you know, it really helps a lot better. Um, your feet just absorb and take it right to the organ where you need it most. And it, it makes a big difference. So if you're doing it and you don't feel um, as quick of a relief or you just don't, you feel like it's a relief, but not as much as you want, try taking off your shoes and just put it on your feet immediately and see if you don't notice the difference. Cause I, I'm pretty sure you will. <laughs> yeah. I have a great appreciation for the feet and the reflexology on the feet. In my mind, I think of it like a remote control to your inner body. So you don't have to be invasive. You just kind of know where to touch. And sometimes you're just massaging it and certain areas hurt and you, you can rub that out and just put the oils on that area. And for some reason, your body responds to it. You don't have to go in there and open things up and see. So that's that's really awesome thank you for sharing that so we are going to move on to the mind if you don't mind <laughs> uh, rosemary <laughs> is the oil of knowledge and transition and remember earlier i was talking about um how it's the oil of change we it helps with the gut too so if you think about it we have a lot of neurotransmitters in our gut and so when it starts to clean out your gut your body, your liver, your gallbladder, um, it does clean out your mind, your thinking, because those two organs, uh, it houses lots of anger and frustration, depression, panic and guilt, hatred, right? And when we clear those things out, um, we, have, we have a clearer brain and we think better. And it's, it's funny because um, if you think about people who are angry, right? They don't think straight. They do silly things, right? Um, but now when we clear that anger, whatever, panic, hatred, um, of course, the, the brains are going to be more um, clear and sensible. So that's just really interesting. You, anybody want to say anything? All righty. So think of Rosemary too as your hat manager. Um, you know, it's kind of funny. I, I, I think I think in pictures. So you know, when you have too many hats you're wearing, you can get headaches because you're trying to um, just spread yourself out too thin. Uh, what rosemary does is it just it changes hats for you. Uh, like my friend, a very you know, I, I think one of the first amazing experience that I had with. Um, rosemary for, for another person is that one friend she had just constant headaches every time um she would walk home and uh, take walk through the door when she came home from, from work and she said she didn't understand because it was such a stressful day she thought that maybe when she comes home she would feel much better um and so instead she gets this headache afterwards and um, she just thought, I, I've tried everything, Jade. I've tried peppermint. I've tried all these other things. I don't know what's happening. And I suggested that she takes, or she just smells um, rosemary or rub it on. And she said all she had to do was smell it. That was all she needed. And she was weird because she put it in um, her, on her in her palms and just cupped it over her nose and mouth and just inhaled and inhaled. And then she said, that was done. It just went away when she did that and she said it was incredible because it was just every single day, this ridiculous headache. Um, and so I said, Oh, you know what? I think that you having a, a hard time, you know, leaving work behind and not bringing it home. 
and then adopting this new role as mum, as um, wife. Okay, so you you put this hat on, and then you're you're putting this extra hat on as well. So, yeah, I guess so. Um, but you know, it was funny because we thought we needed a massage it in, and she just needed to smell it. That was just amazing. I I remember um, when you use this oil for transitional support. Um, like when you were transitioning from teaching oh, yeah. um, to when you got home, you know, because mm -hmm. at, at, mm -hmm. at school, and maybe other women can um, relate to this, you know, they're the, they're the boss, they're, they're teaching, or telling everybody what to do and everything, and they get home, and, and they share that responsibility with their husband, and they, you know, they, they just got to make that transition, take off this hat, and now I'm at home, and I have a different role mm -hmm. to do, and so... I remember there are many times when you talked about this being your transition mm -hmm. oil. Yeah. I dump it on my head though. <laughs> and I just smell it when I wake up. Yeah. This, is, this also works for transitioning from one job to another one or from one um, like section of your life to yeah. another. If you're going through that transition, this can help you accept that. Yeah. Um, I wish my sister was on here too, but we talked about this. We can talk about her since she's more. Yeah. So guys, <laughs> um, when women birth, you know, we have, we have all, nine months to prepare for this new role. You know, we dream about this child. We imagine how it's going to be. We prepare for it. But, um, a lot of men, they get a bit of a shock afterwards. Um, and they have to adjust and transition into fatherhood. And some young, older siblings also mm -hmm. need to transition into not being the only child or, or yeah. you know, having a younger sibling. And there's times when they, they feel upset and they have things happening to them um, and they don't know what's happening, right? Um, and, you know, rosemary could be a really, really good oil for them to transition into this new role. Okay, so, you know, being grandmother or being mother, um, adopting a new stage of life, um, you know, any sort of change that is coming. Um, rosemary, for me, is sort of like the rite of passage oil. You have to have it with your whatever rite of passage you, you come into. Okay, I want to hear from you guys. Um, any, anyone with questions or comments or, yeah. I think rosemary is going to be my constant companion this year. I have a lot of changes and transitions coming up. Yeah. Um, well, ones that I've already, uh, they're already happening. And, and I have a lot of um, hats to, to juggle um, just with different responsibilities and everything. So, yeah, I, I'm really glad that I came <laughs> and I'm learning about this lovely oil. Yeah. Is it yummy to you? Oh, yeah, I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Um, just to warn you, sometimes when you do make transitions, you might have to grieve first. So, you know, you look like you're hormonal or whatever. You, you, you'll cry, you'll have some breakdowns and it's nothing bad. It's nothing wrong with you. You just have to kind of accept and, and realize that this comes with change. Uh, like peeling layers off you, um, you know, like throwing yourself into the refining fire and getting shaken up a little bit. Um, and then uh, you come out again and you think, well, what was that about? You know, a couple of days ago, I was cool, cool. <laughs> yeah. What else is new? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Awesome. I can attest to that. I know rosemary was one of my oils because I'm going through like a lot of transitions right now. And the first day that I used it, I was like, oh my gosh, what is wrong with me? Like, what is going on emotionally? And I just like added some like coriander in there and I don't know, some patchouli or whatever was like relaxing at the time. And that like kind of helped calm it down a little bit. <laughs> Yay. Yeah. <laughs> And I feel bad for Ben whenever I use oils and things and I'm clearing some things and he could say just something and it could not even be related. And I feel teary and I cry and he freaks out like, what did I say? Did you get offended? <laughs> and I'm like, no. 
Sorry. Just... I'm sure no one else has that problem. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, we change and, you know, in the end, I'm so grateful because you feel better and you feel more confident. You're more awakened. Okay. So that's the important part. That probably explains... I was using it a lot this weekend, but we are going through a lot of changes in our home and stuff. And Sunday at church, we were walking in and Jason just said something and I was kind of like that. And I was like, and after I was like, why am I like, it's not even a big deal. Something about like, are we on time or, or, or did we get here late? It was nothing big. But in my mind, I was all sad and like, oh, I'm trying to get here. And we're not even really late. And, you know, whatever. It was something silly. And then I spent the whole weekend with Rosemary. I didn't, I didn't even remember that it was going to be Rosemary. But I did all that. And we're going. And I'm, like, thinking now that you're talking about the transition, I'm like, well, all my, both my kids need it. And Jason needs it. And, you know, but today I was, like, going through a sad thing. And then after I was like, well, I must just be all these changes and overcoming, you know, I'm having this new role and the business, this is, this is changing and it's picking up. And, and then I have, you know, this stuff going on and the kids are getting out of, you know, their exams and everything. So I just thought it was that, but maybe now that I'm reflecting, maybe it's a little bit of the, the whole transition and all that working through. So. Yeah. Okay. Who here is excited to use Rosemary? <laughs> Me. Yeah. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> Put it in your shampoo. <laughs> so it's hard to change sometimes, but I think the people that are on this call, we want to change and we're throwing ourselves in the deep end. And, and it's mm -hmm. not going to be pretty, but you'll come out ahead because you're allowing yourself to, to change instead of holding on to um, old stuff. That leads me to the next thing we want to talk about is this spiritual change because everything happens in the spirit first. So in order for you to be um, bigger than you are, okay, more grown up, more mature, more confident, more rich, um, more powerful, you need to be that in the spirit first. Okay. So in order to do that, you need to shift and rosemary is an amazing oil to help get rid of the stinking thinking right so a lot of us we try to do the same things and expect the same you know a different result and we don't know why i'm working really hard i'm talking to all these people i'm doing all these things why hasn't it changed we see the same patterns over and over there's something we we can't see and rosemary um helps us kind of put that in front of our faces and it it might be uncomfortable but uh, we, we're brave, we can do it, right? And once you allow yourself to go through that change, um, and like I said, it's not easy, but you, you can change, you can change afterwards. Um, so some of the stinking thinking that I've noticed um, uh, is because we're in this business here, um, we of course promote good health with people, but also people want freedom. Uh, using essential oils um, for an extended period of time, I've noticed a lot of people, um, their eyes are open and they have more awareness and things are never the same again. And they see things in a different way and they see potential, they see themselves in a different place. Um, and so we, we actually get to feel and see our um, blueprint, things that uh, we've been carrying around that we didn't even realize we've been carrying around like um our parents inhibitions our parents money story or um whatever it is um or um people feel uh, a lack of confidence or whatever it is that holds you back from your success uh, from your um full potential that is the obstacle those um stinking thinking patterns that you just need to throw out and sometimes we can't see it in ourselves but rosemary helps you kind of face that um, and it's kind of ugly sometimes um, but it helps you change on that spiritual level okay remember i said that this is the oil for remembrance if you remember you can reflect back um, one really good thing to do is to write your 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 parents' story or your family story, um, depending on what the topic is. 
So um, you can, this one lady, um, the, the thing was health, she was um, diabetic and um, for some reason she couldn't get well. And it was her, her family story, both sides, they, they, like, they, um, they relied on being sick to, to get their attention. And um, so she didn't see that in herself, right? Um, another example is uh, money. So people who have some money problems, they, they have to write their parents' money story. What happened and um, what was the words that they used towards money to, um, or for riches or whatever. And then with this oil, you can smell it and you can reflect back and then choose to change those, the, the, that story. Does that make sense? You change it for yourself. Do you want to add something to that, honey? Um, I mean that. <laughs> I think uh, being able, you know, this um, this idea of um, thinking back through your past. Um, you know, you run into because we you were you were saying earlier that um, a lot of uh, physical ailments come from emotional roots. They have emotional problems with them. And sometimes you don't know where those emotions are coming from. So having a tool like this to help you dig um, into those roots and, uh, you know, up, uproot what, what, where those emotions were coming from. So if you find that sometimes people are pushing your buttons and, or something happens and you're always reacting in a certain way, um, if you can go back to the first time that you've felt that emotion, go back in your memory. And, and this is one of those um, an oil that can help you. Um, Go into the files. Yeah, dig back through your memory and kind of discover when it was the first time you, you felt that way um, and deal with that. Sometimes our subconscious mind does funny things. Um, it's not logical. Um, I'm trying to think of an, an example. Um, um, well, a recent example in a book I was reading. Uh, where this this guy he um he got a job at at, at a, as a salesman in the same company with his dad and he worked really hard he wanted to make his dad really proud and everything and and he got his first um paycheck and he and he said to his dad look look at um and didn't I do good and his dad his face fell and he realized that that month his dad had been working in this company for like six or seven years and, and he had made more than his dad in that particular month. And, and it caused him a lot of pain. And so later on in his life, he associated that pain with earning money and he, he tended to fail at all his business ventures. So for him to go back and, and, and he didn't know why, um, and he had to just deal with that issue and kind of unlink that. Um, it, it doesn't make logical sense, but in his mind, you know, that emotion locked him out of, um, you know, having success later on in life. So um, he probably didn't have essential oils uh, to help guide him through that process. But if it, you're going through that process and you're trying to figure out um, where did I get this from? What's stopping me? Um, you know, that would be a very good essential oil to use to help guide you through that process. So to tie it all up, guys, so if you go back to, say, that uric acid concern, um, the hardening, the anger, the resentment, um, you know, the rosemary can help you kind of dig it out and find out why you had that hardening um, and see things clearly. Uh, so with my dad, we just told him, we said that, Dad, remember when you were younger, your dad said this and this, you're saying it to your son. And at that time, he was having a hard time with um, my brother because they had a joint business. And then he had that problem. Nothing is coincidence. So I said to him, you know, can you see that your mind and your heart is hardened the same way it was when you were younger? How do you think my brother feels, right? And then he got it. And so he made some changes and he felt better. His physical body felt better. So it all links any questions or comments that anybody would like to make yeah, on that's all I have to say subject? about Rosemary. We just can unmute people. Okay. I, I, um, while you're thinking, um, I, 
wanted to bring up the subject with recipes, we have a lot of essential oils that mimic, not mimic, but they come from herbs. Um, I know we have, you know, cumin, dill, and ginger, and all these sorts of essential oils in our kitchen. Um, rosemary is a fantastic one to put in your kitchen. Does anybody have any recipes? I'm thinking about food right now. <laughs> Does anybody have any recipes that they use uh, rosemary essential oil with? I make like a rosemary thyme bar. Actually, one of the coffee shops I worked with, one of the girls made them and they're like rosemary thyme, like in like blackberry jam and you do oats and you can make those for like a good sweet treat or um, rosemary chicken is I'm cliche but it is really really good <laughs> awesome we should try that I, I think it'd be great tossing in rosemary like on some potato wedges uh -huh. um, and you know after you bake them um, especially maybe if you have someone in the house who who could benefit from you know, the, the mind <laughs> you, this, this transitional support <laughs> thing you have someone that's um yeah, <laughs> you can sprinkle some rosemary on You know what, when you point, the... you know, there's three fingers pointing back at you. <laughs> I, was, I wasn't pointing at anybody, especially you. That's all um, right, I was just teasing. But yeah, I mean, that, that, that would be great, a great way to support someone. Um, maybe someone who's going in to take a test, preparing for exams. Some rosemary potato wedges. Pretty good. <laughs> Check it to Either potato wedges or chicken. I... <laughs> Well, thank Those you, are my you favorite guys. Pieces. On the physical part, have you got in here the hardening? There was a phrase you used, and I should have written it down, and I didn't. Have you got that in there about the hardening? No, I just mentioned it because we we talked about uric acid. Did we? Um, we put it in there. Huh? Yeah. Yeah, uh, in the mind part, I talked about the. Um, That's the why emotions. it's great for the yeah. gallbladder. Yeah, yeah the I gallbladder remember you talking and about that. But... And kidneys. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right, any other questions on rosemary? <laughs> okay. All right, fantastic. Very interesting, Dan. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so we'll end the recording here. You know, last week we talked about